Hi everybody, welcome back to the Ketogenic Fasting Project's video number 26, Back to Basic. I was thinking about uh, why I make these videos and uh, primarily they're to help people that are curious about things like ketogenic uh, diets and fasting, obviously. But of course there's a lot of spin-off in that for me personally. So uh, the carnivore diet is one of the newer ones started exploring at the end of last year. And uh, it's, it's sort of a natural evolution for some people, but I'm also exploring things like uh, uh, thermogenics and stuff like that. So both the cold and the heat can uh, be a, a powerful force in your life. So anyways, I don't wanna get too far uh, astray when it comes to just uh, giving some basic help for people who are looking for information. So I uh, mentioned before that I've, I've consumed quite a few books and I uh, spent quite a bit of time experimenting and uh, reading and talking to other people and trying to cooperate with other people and we're all doing this for our own personal improvement you know but it's kind of a collective bottom-up effort because it's not typically led by doctors it's not a lot of people going to their doctor and their doctor giving them advice to explore these things there are more and more doctors that do but most of us never come in contact with them we see them in uh, interviews and videos and movies like uh, the magic pill that came out but uh, other than that it's mostly people sharing information so i'm going to do more book reviews on the books that i've covered to give people an idea why they might want to read them uh, i i try and share as many sources as possible whether that's books podcasts websites studies and so on and so forth right and and i try and share the the experience that i have personally and i also try and relearn stuff because there's so much information nobody's going to remember it all the first time around and, and we all have to unlearn a few things if we want to change you know and then there's always i'm always uh keeping learning or learning to keep going and finding new information and blending them together seeing how they fit so the the books are kind of a core uh because they go into depth they're they're typically long form i think a book like the china study was 18 hours of listening but a lot of people aren't going to do it so I, you know, share uh, nuggets from it, as it were. And then uh, there's lots of studies. So one of the tools you can learn is to uh, read the studies, at least uh, just read the briefs at the beginning. So you have some idea what they're about, and then you can explore what's in them. Almost everything is available online. There's a few things that are behind paywalls, but um, there's lots of videos and podcasts that talk about the studies and and the results that other people have had so uh there's also the websites and, and the overall community you know facebook is is rich with all kinds of ketogenic carnivore and fasting project uh type uh groups that do all kinds of stuff together so what is ketosis just in a basic explanation a refresher or for the people who are new to this ketosis is a state where your body is fueling itself primarily with fat you're never totally in a state where you're only um, using fat or carbohydrates but and there's always a little bit of protein involved right but uh, a state of higher fat or a state of higher carbohydrate are basically the two norms and most people are on a high carbohydrate diet and a lot of us people find that by switching to the high fat diet that we feel better we our athletic performance goes up uh, autoimmune diseases go away we lose weight uh, specifically adipose tissue or body fat goes down and we have a lot more endurance so in a state of ketosis we we uh, tend to measure our level of 
fat uh, fuel in our blood by measuring beta hydroxybutyrate in our blood or acetone in our breath or even our urine. But uh, primarily the tissues in the body are getting their their fuel from fatty acids, from the breakdown of dietary fat or fat that you eat, um, pr primarily uh, animal fat, but it could be plant-based fats as well. And we tend to replace most of the carbohydrates that we used to eat or sugar, cereals, breads, pastas, stuff like that, fruit with fat. Uh, fats like, you know, uh, fatty beets, bacon, lard, maybe olive oil, which of course would be plant-based. So in your state of ketosis, a lot of people feel different. You don't have that that drop in blood sugar or anything like that you're we're, or, we're used to experiencing where you might get sluggish after lunch or you might get hangry or whatever. That all goes away and uh, hunger becomes a very mild thing because when you're primarily fueled with fat, and you run out of the dietary fat that you've eaten, you just start burning your body fat. So there tends to be a nice smooth sort of transition there that bypasses that whole roller coaster feeling of blood sugar going up and down. You get into ketosis by uh, shifting your diet. A lot of people adjust their diet so that they're eating, getting about 75, maybe 85% of the calories from fat and, and 20%, 15%, maybe 10%, 5% from carbohydrates. And they tend to stick to leafy greens that are full of fiber and you don't really have to count the fiber, but they tend to avoid starchy vegetables. Some people only eat stuff that grows above the ground. They tend not to eat fruit, which tends to have a lot of a lot of sugar in it if they do eat fruit it tends to be things like berries but you're going to give up pastas breads potatoes uh you know uh, anything anything starchy anything made from grain and stuff like that is typically out and uh, then you tend to eat a moderate amount of protein because protein can be converted into blood sugar so that is how you get into ketosis you eat a high fat diet a high percentage um uh, the longer you're in ketosis or on a ketogenic diet or a high fat diet or a carnivore diet, the less critical the ratio tends to be. Uh, you tend to stay in a state of ketosis uh, the more athletic you are. And that's the nice thing about switching from a high carbohydrate diet to a high fat diet. It becomes much easier to be active and to become more athletic. At least it was for me. You want to stay in a state of ketosis or at least mild ketosis most of the time because you feel better. Uh, the lack of carbohydrates tends to discourage cancer and cancer growth. It tends to mediate um, uh, autoimmune diseases. I myself had arthritis and psoriasis, which got much better. I, as far as I can tell, my arthritis is gone. Psoriasis is almost gone. Um, a lot of what I thought were injuries is going to be stuck with the rest of my life. Don't bother me anymore. Stuff, you know, like lower back pain and stuff that troubled me for a, at least a decade seemed to be completely gone. So naturally, uh, it seemed to be very closely tied to the diet. When I got away from a carbohydrate based diet, the inflammation in the body went, my body apparently went down and I don't have the pain I used to have. And, and I also seem to be able to lose weight, lose body fat and put on muscle much easier. My testosterone levels are higher, which helps your, helps the body repair. And also, you know, you just feel better. So I feel better all the time. And in a state of, of, of strong ketosis, uh, there seems to be a great deal of mental clarity that is often lacking when you're primarily f fueled by carbohydrates. So that's a big incentive to, uh, to want to stay in ketosis. Is this a fad that's going to go away? You know, there's been a lot of fad diets and I would say no. I think that this is an evolution in, in the diet. Uh, if you go all the way back and you see the diets that, uh, you know, um, I believe it was William Banting started uh, uh, way back in the 1800s. He wrote a, a pamphlet that was very popular. And then uh, a lot of people probably remember the Atkins diet. 
Uh, this is, you know, a ketogenic movement and, and adding fasting in and then now the carnivore movement is kind of the evolution in that. And I think it's, it's actually with greater understanding, people are having greater results. And the reason why a lot of diets fail is because people don't stay on them. But I think with the better understanding of the diet and the greater acceptance of the diet, people are having a much easier time staying on it and they're having better re results. So particularly people that were really sick, you know, they have a lot of incentive now to stay on it because if they, if they could be happy eating, uh, you know, a high fat, you know, diet with lots of tasty meat in it, it's a lot easier than, you know, living on celery or something like that, right? I think it's very much going mainstream, you know, um, movies like uh, The Magic Pill came out, which is a documentary on uh, Netflix, which is very, very, very uh, good movie and very popular. Uh, it took me a while to get around to watching it, but I'm really glad I did. Uh, a number of people mentioned it. And, and there's so many books coming out. There's so many conventions coming out. And I think that the, the concept of of saturated fat causing coronary artery disease or diabetes or cancer is really starting to recede and that's kind of giving people permission in a way to move to a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet and and I think people now aren't afraid of fasting they realize well when I when I have a high fat diet it's easy for me to fast whether you're fasting for 12 hours or you're fasting for 12 days there's not the sort of discomfort that you might expect. So I think it's here to stay. And I think people are more and more people are going to continue to find improved health and uh, improved mood. I think the effect that it has on people, um, it it's uh, a number of people uh, who uh, are autistic f find that some of their, their uh, har harsher symptoms or more uh, captive sy symptoms tend to be alleviated. Uh, and I I'm definitely going to talk about that in the future. And then, of course, you know, people debilitating arthritis and disfiguring things like psoriasis are finding it uh, helpful. And then people are fighting cancer with it. I mean, who's not afraid of cancer and diabetes? So I think it's here to stay. And, I and diabetes is probably uh, commonly referred to as the low-hanging fruit. Uh, you go on a ketogenic, a good ketogenic diet, or you just do intermittent fasting or do both, and you could pretty much cure type 2 diabetes, and people do it all the time now. So I think that alone is going to keep this, this diet around. And then I think people are starting to understand that heart disease, diabetes, cancer, uh, a number of other diseases, there's some uh, people are getting relief um, in other psychiatric uh complications from going on a high fat diet so many of these uh, modern diseases may very well stem from just stem uh, stem from just people having too many refined carbohydrates in their diet and the way to reset the body and get back to normal may just very well be to go on a high fat diet some people may stay there the rest of the life some people may get better and go back to a more medium diet I don't know but I don't think the diet itself or the concept is going to go away. I think it's just going to get improved with time. So once again, I want to thank you for listening to the Ketogenic Fasting Project. I sincerely hope that the information helps somebody. And I'm going to make an effort to do faster, more energetic, more uh, basic videos to help people understand um, how they can get started and how they can find the information for themselves. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I appreciate it. Thanks.